Hello, I don't know from which part of the world you are connecting with me, but I hope you are healthy and safe. So, if you've ever been to a doctor, or if you've ever seen a reference letter for a doc from a doctor, you will see there's a pattern of that, right? Why? Because that's how one doctor talked to other doctor. And if you've ever been to a doctor for something, like they, may, they have a set of questions. Do you have a headache? Do you have any vision problem? Do you have a drowsy? Or do you have a... Uh, difficult to breathe or do you have a difficult to uh, eat or swallow or there are a bunch of set of questions they're asking from you to determine what's wrong with you right so why because uh, throughout the histories and throughout the experience they have a kind of uh, analysis of data and analysis of uh, uh, illnesses and they figure out a way pattern how people get ill right so that way they can easily diagnose what's wrong with you so as a software engineers, we have the same thing. We have a uh, we have a same set of problems we are always occurring, and we have a same set of solutions we have to give, right? So we the, all those fall under patterns. But the problem with most of us, we don't pay enough attention to those, right? If so we are trying to learn big things like a microservices, Docker's, and the clustering, and the big data, and the machine learning and AI. But we don't pay attention to those design patterns, which was the foundation for years and years to build the successful software. So, therefore, I decided to talk about a few design patterns, especially most important design patterns in a few videos. Like those are very short videos, you can follow and you can uh, get on board with this. So, why this is especially just on board into software engineering, or if you are willing to on board software engineering, or also if you are started this journey, but it's a few years, but you never paid attention to design patterns, then these videos are for you, right? So make sure you follow those and make sure you try some examples despite the examples what I do, right? So don't try to follow the, my same example, but try to come up with a different scenario and uh, try some examples and put a comment or uh, use my page to communicate and if you get any problem, okay? So why these design patterns are so important? In 1994, as I remember, 1994, uh, there was a book released called Design Patterns. Uh, authors are we, I mean, there was four authors, but we used to know them as a gang of four, right? So in that book, they divided this entire pattern for three categories. By name, those are creational and structural and a behavioral, right? So under those categories, they put a few design patterns, few patterns you can follow to the coding, right? But today, I have seen most of developers, they just see the problem, they see possible solution, and they just jump and implement something, right? But whenever you need to implement something, if you know these design patterns, I mean, you know exactly how to implement, right? You don't have to think, okay, what are the class to be created, what are the methods, and how to uh, create and propagate the variables. You don't have to pay attention for any of those because those are created and are tested and are proven with these patterns, right? And so, also most important thing with uh, this design pattern, doesn't matter which language you're following, maybe it's a .NET, maybe it's a Java, maybe something else, but still this is uh, go with the double OP and uh, those coding style and the pattern. So you must learn this doesn't matter which uh, language you're following to do your development. So I'm going to cover one at a time, right? And I'm not going to give this description in a future videos. So you make sure uh, you follow all the videos, right? So today, I'm going to talk about singleton pattern. Singleton is the one of most commonly used design pattern. And I would say it is a one of most abused design pattern as well. So why? Because people has little cloudy uh, view about this uh, singleton principle and they just implement the way they think this is right. Okay, what is singleton? Singleton mean uh, one instance, okay. One instance per what? One instance per machine, one instance per cloud, one instance per area, one instance per developer, to whom? One instance per user. So singleton mean one instance per container, right? So if you're a Java program, then one instance per JVM. Right. Before we start to do this practically, and there's a one place, most of developers kind of uh, uh, violate principles of singleton. So if you're implementing a singleton, you should not 
take any arguments uh, when you create the instance, right? So if you take, I mean, it's a different pattern called factory pattern, right? So that is not a singleton. I mean, you can take argument and still uh, give the single instance, but you should not do that, right? So if, if you need to take much arguments, then better go for a factory pattern. And also, uh, singleton, you should not overkill because it is really hard to unit test because there are no instance variables and there are no any other uh, references to create. So, therefore, it's really hard to unit test. So, uh, you should not use singleton everywhere even though uh, it's possible. You need to use singleton uh, wherever it needs. So, now, most people use the singleton. It's a very simple way like this right so in uh, there are multiple uh, times multiple places we use this for example you can use this as a, a logger and uh, and sometimes you can use i mean a logger is a little arguable because some people implement this as a singleton and some people use uh, implement as a factory and uh, probably uh, most most of the time we use this with the database let's let's try to go with the database uh, example and right? so i'm going to create a class here call um, let's say db manager okay and uh, let me to show something to you first right so uh, before we go to real implementation let me to show uh, something to you so we can do very simple thing here public uh, let's say private so private a static volatile db manager and then you make a constructor private so then no one can create an instance from that okay so uh, here now constructor is a private so now no one can create an instance from this so now we can do is equal new db manager right so from here you can uh, create a getter to get this right so now this is quite singleton because uh, when we class load itself, we eagerly create an instance and then construct is a private, no one can create a second instance, right, from this. So if we go for uh, something uh, like test this, you can say db manager equal db manager dot get db manager, right. So I'm going to print this, okay, and I'm going to try this with a second instance equal new uh, sorry db manager dot get db manager and s out db manager one right so now i'm going to run this program and if you run this you can see it it we got the same instance right though we uh, call for different though you assign for two different variables and you invoke two different times but it gave you the same instance because it's a singleton right so uh, a lot of people stopping there but this is not a good idea and this is limiting but you can do with this instance right let's say when you create this instance you need to do uh, set up certain things then uh, you cannot do this right so therefore what we can do is we don't we don't do this here right so we just uh, set like this we don't we don't instance from here and also there's one good practice because uh, there are a framework like reflection so those reflection framework may interfere with this and create a second instance by manually invoking a constructor so you can stop it even with that from here right so if um, db manager not null and Right, so now uh, if someone interfere with the reflection framework, we block them, right? We just tell, hey, go and uh, use the get db manager instance, right? So what we can do here, we just check if db manager is null, then, then we create db manager equal new db manager right so now what we do here if the db manager is null that means it's not created yet then we create a db manager right otherwise uh, if this create this false then it will return this one okay so now if you uh, run this one you will see the same result right so because if it is already created uh, it return uh, same instance right they've already created the instance but if it is not it will be the new instance right so we're good but here's the problem with this 
right so let's put curly braces you to easily understand this okay so now let's assume the first thread came here right and its check value is a null right so it's go in and it's trying to create and assign the value into this db manager variable right so meantime the thread 2 comes here and asks hey into the line number 24 and asks hey is db manager is null so this instance is not created yet it's being creating right so it's, it's still creating so what it tells yes it's, it's null so then second thread also will come in so that means this is not thread safe right so there are edge cases two threads or multiple threads may create an instance depend on the uh, i mean it's yeah it's edge case but it's possible right so to avoid that what we can do is we, there is a principle called double checking singleton right so this is double checking implementation so what we do here if it is null we call synchronize to this db manager class right so now what happened now what happened first first thread comes here and see whether it's a, a null yes it go in and create a, a synchronized lock and go inside and now what we do here we still check second time if db manager is null right so if that is null then we create that so now thread one came here line number 24 whether this is null yes it's null so then line number 26 it uh, acquire lock and then go inside check again whether db manager is null yes so now meantime now it's creating an instance while it creating the second thread came db manager is null in the line number 24 yes it is null because it's not created yet right it's still creating so it go to the line number 26 it say hey you cannot go in because there's a one guy inside already and he's working on this right so wait outside right so now what happened first thread leaves then synchronize block allow the second thread to go in and then it will code by line number 26 now it's asked db manager is null so now it will tell yes yes previous thread created that so then it will not go in it jump here and return the same instance right so this is the correct way to implement a singleton so this is called double checking singleton or some people call double locking and there is no two locks uh, if you speak right so then the right name would be double checking singleton so you can see it's still it's written the same uh, instance right so there is one other mistake some people uh, some developers do here so they use they use a uh, synchronized keyword here which is you should not do why because if you do so so there is a possibility you get a performance hit because it, yeah this is a very simple method because it's an example but in the real implementation you maybe have a 20 30 lines within this method and then when you put the synchronize on the method level you block everything right so rather you are blocking those you just need to block uh, the exact uh, code segment you need to lock right okay so now we got this so let us move into some uh, real practical example here right so let's try to get a connection right so right i create a connection uh, variable here right so now i'm going to create a method to get the connection right so here purposely i'm not making this as uh, static so because what i expect is the developer to get the db manager instance and from that uh, get a connection right so therefore purposely i'm not uh, doing this so what I do here, um, I already added uh, two dependencies to my POM file to create an in-memory database, right? Derby uh, in, in-memory database, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to invoke this. Um, I'm going to create a connection for this uh, Derby database, right? So here, uh, in, in uh, ultimate purpose is return the connection, right? So, but we before we that we need to check whether the connection is null, right? If the connection is null, we go inside and create a synchronize to this class, right? 
and second time we check if the connection is null right and if the connection is null so now here we are creating a new connection so i'm going to create a url here right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a derby database in memory and database name is sample and so my connection variable is driver manager dot get connection by passing this url right so it may ask uh, through exception right so i'm going to handle with the try catch and just print a uh, print statement is track trace i don't do this in a production application at all since this is just a sample right so now uh, i'm good right so now what i can do is from here i can create a, con a connection variable and db manager dot get connection right so i like to do something uh, interesting here i'm going to use two variables so let's do inside this long start and long end right so what i'm going to do here start equal system dot get current time right so i'm going to check the current millisecond before we create the instance right and also at the end and then i'm going to print the time taken to create this instance okay so this will print the time right so I'm going to do and what I'm going to do is it's let's say it's more interesting. So I'm going to get the connection from this as well. Okay. And for here as well, I'm going to get the connection variable. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to get the connection uh, twice and I'm going to see uh, is there any difference in between those two when you execute. Right. So you will see here now, right? To get the connection first time, it took uh, 1382 millisecond, right? But to get the connection second time, it didn't take any single millisecond, just zero, right? In the, all the tests proven, that single turn saved us almost 1.5 seconds, right? So like, just assume like each and every DB call will get this get executed. So this is really a nice way to do it, right? But Disadvantage of being sing, uh, using singleton, most people when they see, when they realize this uh, power of the singleton, what they do is they kind of overuse this, right? So that may be give problems to your application. So don't ever do that. So use uh, this in the right place, right? And then subscribe to my channel and also like and comment uh, to this video and reach me in the Facebook page if you have any questions and I'm happy to answer, right? And if that uh, question is like long enough to discuss, maybe I'll, I'll provide my email address so you can connect through email. And make sure you try this with uh, some uh, different examples and practice. Next video is come tomorrow. Stay safe. Take care.